Hey everybody, I wanted to make a video about how the test is going to work because it sometimes can be hard to communicate it in an email. I'm here with my cookie monster and she's sitting in my lap so you can imagine her sitting in your lap. She's uber squishy and snuggly. Alright, so um, here's how it's going to go. Um, there's going to be, there's some crazy birds flying by. That's super cool. Um, there's going to be the online portion of the test given through Proctorio. Proctorio is essentially there. People can use it to varying levels of intensity. Um, I'm going to use it primarily to make sure that you're, um, you're who you say you are and that somebody else isn't standing next to you helping you take the test. That's essentially what I'm going to do. So I don't have it at maximum settings. Um, it won't allow you to click off or to print or to copy because those are some things that might aid somebody who wanted to cheat. I want to make sure it's fair to the people who try really hard. Um, so I do encourage you, I noticed that not many people have tried the practice Proctorio uh, exam setup. Please go in there and do that because it is a weird environment and I want you to click around and do all the stuff that you might want to do and see what happens. Most often what happens is that the, it's an algorithm that senses behavior that I've said is not okay or behavior that's weird. And so it kind of does like a time lapse video of you unless you do something that it thinks isn't good and then it starts recording you in normal speed and then it will alert me to go v watch that section. So I can see the, kind of the whole thing but that would take a long time for me to view all of your scores. I mean to think about it in context I have 180 students in my face-to-face -face classes um, but it will alert me go, go look at this little spot because something happened. So if you're just taking the test as you normally would then I wouldn't worry about it. There's settings where you can remove the view. It, it will show you a box of your own self and, and that might be weird to see. So there's settings where you can remove that. You can play with the calculator. You can play with a little sketchboard in there. So I would go there and practice that. So that's how that proctorial will work. Um, practice it. Let me know if you have any questions. The types of questions that you'll get. There's going to be two open-ended questions, just like we saw on our exam two. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a prompt, and you have to do the six steps. Now, those two prompts can include three possible t-tests. Because remember, we've learned about a one-sample t, a dependent sample t, and an independent sample t. So if it's one of these three tests, um, then you'll have to do the six steps for those three tests. Now, if it's a one-sample t, easy enough. You can calculate it. If it's the dependent or the independent sample t, then I'm going to give you the JASP output in the prompt. And you're going to use that to justify your six steps. So I'm not expecting you to run JASP during the test because that takes time. Um, what I will do is I'll give you two prompts with one of these three t styles. And then the third one that I didn't ask you to do is going to be a take-home version of um, the JASP uh, report. So I don't know if you remember exam one. I gave you data and had you analyze it and submit it back to me. We're going to do the same thing. Um, and so after you're done with the um, kind of the long exam in Proctorio, you will be getting your own data set and I'll ask you to run it and give me a particular report and you're going to get that back to me by uploading it into Canvas and that will be the third question. So I will have basically your ability to generate um, the t-test or the calculated t for both one for all three one sample dependent and independent the rest of the exam that's kind of the proctorio exam other than those two prompts which will be at the beginning because they're worth more points there'll be other multiple choice and matching kinds of questions and those will be very very similar to the multiple choice that I've d done on previous exams so they kind of also be some theory questions some two-tailedness one-tailedness uh, rejection region questions how is the one sample like a dependent how are they like an independent how are they like a one sample Z how are they different those kinds of things um, so those multiple choice questions will be um, targeting the theory of the test, whereas those open-ended questions will be more kind of just practicing through the six steps. It's open note, open anything, oh, sorry, I should clarify, open note. <laughs> you can't surf the web during the test, you can't ask your friend during the test, but any book, any notes, 
uh, anything that you have written um, at your disposal you can use. You won't be able to use your cell phone, uh, you won't be able to use the internet, but um, you, either you're not limited to a one page of, of cheat sheet. So that's good. I do recommend actually maybe making a cheat sheet anyway because I have found that students who make it open note they actually try to go deeper and they're flipping and they're flipping and they're wasting a lot of time um, and and sometimes I've seen people do worse on open note tests because they're so busy trying to get the finite details that they they forget to just answer the question so perhaps make a small cheat sheet or two-page cheat sheet just so that you have a resource that's easily navigatable during the test um, I had one more thought. What was it? Uh, in terms of the uh, how I will get the data to you to analyze for the the take home piece. I know the whole thing is take home, but um, the kind of the the non timed exam piece. Um, I will be giving you more information on that. So let me know if you have any questions, and um, I encourage you to practice the the questions that I put out there, the practice exam, and. Um, I, I hope to hear from you because I miss you guys. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.